Welcome everybody to to Hidden in the Universal Vault. So I'm Ryan, your host as always. So I thought, you know what? I thought we'd go ahead and take a look at a, a comedy mid 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 nineties comedy. One of my favorite comedies, though. So I'll tell you a little story. But the movie we're going to take a look at is Problem Child Two, released in 1991. Now. I did cover the original Problem Child, and I'll get, go for really short. I love the original Problem Child. It's great. But I didn't know what else to watch, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to watch Problem Child, too, because I haven't covered it on the channel. This is actually my fourth watch of the film, but I wanted to cover it on the channel, though. So if you haven't seen Problem Child 2, this is a sequel to the 1990 comedy Problem Child. And once again, it focuses on, follows... Uh, Junior and Ben, obviously starring the great the great John Ritter, he plays uh, Ben. So basically, in this sequel, it picks up after the first one. This time they're on, they move out of that state, and they decide to move into a new area. So at the beginning of the film, we see them moving the house, and he's very excited. So he gets all these housewarming gifts, but Junior isn't pleased. So they get the housewarming gifts, and this is where chaos happens. If you've seen the first Problem Child, once again, it's kind of more of the same, his shenanigans. But what makes the sequel even better is the fact that they, they ramp up the comedy even more. You thought the first movie was funny? Well, they tripled that. In fact, this movie got a PG-13 rating. The first movie's PG. Nowadays it would have been a PG-13 no matter what. But to have the sequel as PG-13 I think is a smart move. This also co-stars Lorraine Newman and uh, Amy Yazbak in the film, who uh, plays the, I don't want to say love interest, but he's trying to find out to get a new mom, but it's crazy. Just basically, scene by scene, it's the like gross out humor, sexual innuendo, just everything that makes this sequel better. And I think it's like funny. I crack it up tears. I've seen this so many times. Really, really funny movie. So, like, literally, oh, oh, and get this, Mr. Strickland appears in the film, but instead of principal in this, he now plays a teacher. So, that's cool. Uh, James Token, I think is the actor's name, who plays Mr. Strickland. I'm just going to call him Mr. Strickland, because that's all it is in this one. He's just Mr. Strickland. So, he meets up with a girl named Trixie, whose previous film I reviewed, Parenthood, appears in this movie, though. Uh, yeah. Just really, really crazy film. I don't know what else to say. It's just, it's craziness after happening. Like one scene, they put a stick of dynamite in the toilet. He goes to a carnival that he wasn't the right size, so it cranks it off to seven. It becomes one giant bar fest. It is like the Funniest, craziest movie. Like, he'll, like, set up traps, and he would get another, he would go on another date, and the girl, and he ups up, like, <laughs> It's just absolutely hilarious. I've seen this so many times. I'm like, it's a guilty pleasure, sure. The movie is not for everyone, but it, come on. It, it, it's a comedy. You just turn off your brain and just have a good time with this. Sure, it might gross out some people, though, but it's better than any other comedies I watch these days. But, I mean, it's really a funny movie. Uh, trying to think what else in, in the film happens, though. So, he basically... So, okay. The first movie's main antagonist was Amy Asbach, who plays the main antagonist of this. Well, Amy Asbach comes back in this, but she plays the the mother of Trixie, who's actually the school nurse in this. The main antagonist in this is Lorraine Newman. She plays the main antagonist. Oh, the grandfather's a scene stealer. The grandfather, I forgot, the grandfather does get a dog named Nippy, so I quote every line from it. So, there is a lot of strong language and a lot of, and a lot of, uh, fart and poop scenes where the dog takes a giant crap. I should say he takes a giant crap, but literally, like, one scene, he, he goes on a date with someone else, so the boyfriend then just comes in, and he hits the one 
one waiter with a pipe, he goes down. So she comes, he comes in, knocks Ben out with a pipe, he drops. But the grandfather's the scene stealer though. So he's driving the car and then he, Junior films the babysitter making love to her boyfriend. Biker comes in, is like, get away, runt. This is a scene where Junior turns on. Uh, Junior's played by Michael Oliver, who was in the first one, though. But just crazy movie. So they'll film that. There's literally, I forget what scene it was, but I'm trying to think what scene that was. Uh, I forget. So, yeah, the, 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 the grandfather, they meet these twins, these sort of doppelganger twins. So basically, they're the same twins in Kindergarten Cop. They're one of the students in the kindergarten class. So let's get this. We get the actress who plays Trixie was in Parenthood. She played Rick Moranis' daughter in Parenthood. But in Kindergarten Cop, we get the twins who does a lot of weird scenes of that. Comes back in this. So one scene, they're having a lemonade sale. He, he, it's basically, excuse the language, but I have to say this. He basically just, he pisses in the cup and then literally the guy gets lemonade. This is, this is not half full. You know, get your free glass. Okay, that's fine. Like stuff like that. So the guy's repairing the car as us, so the guy who blew up the thing. I'm just going on and on some of the funny moments. He literally drinks, I hate to say this he drinks piss. It's insane. P, I should say what it is, but just... Really crazy movie. I love this movie though. Like they also have a yard sale. Like it's like, well, the grandfather comes out and is like, well, 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 what do we have here? And then he's like, you're selling this all for a nickel and 25 cents. He's like, heck, I paid this for, I paid two million for, oh no. <gasps> Nippy, 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 what the hell are you doing? You little crooks. <laughs> I'm taking all the stuff back. Like, not alone, the grandfather. The grandfather's played by Jack Warren, who I think steals the whole thing. He's like, you little psycho. So it's like, you are a mean, evil little boy. You need to respect your elders. He pulls out the belt, but get ready, Junior has nunchucks. So they'll, they'll fight. He pulls the nunchucks and he goes flying out the window, laying on a tree. He, he just he just decided to drop out, something like that, though. It's it's crazy. It's the grandfather knows he's a monster. Everybody knows he's a monster. Yeah, he's a lovable, excuse the language again, but he's such a lovable asshole. Like, you want to hate the kid, but you also love the kid. This is some sentimental moments. Like, there's a scene where the puppet show, funny enough, June Foray voices one of the puppets in the movie. That wasn't Trixie's voice. That was June Foray. Doing the voice of the puppets, which I think was really cool, yes. Rocket J. Squirrel voices a puppet in this, which I covered Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle, the movie, the 2000 movie, which I was at June Foray, returned back to doing the voice. So, yeah, it, I don't want to go too much into Gilbert Godfrey, I forgot, returns from Oni Orphanage. He's now the principal. What are you doing here, pea brain? Just, I could go on and on and on. So, do I really need to say Final Verdict C, Problem Child 2? It is exactly how a sequel should be made. Better writing, funny humor, good acting, just everything about this movie is just good. Like, really good practical effects, especially the, the vomit scene was pretty good uh, practical effects. I guess I could say that. Is there anything that, okay, now to talk about the goods, are there anything in the bads? That I would say is not very good. Uh, um, I don't know. I can't really say anything bad. It's just, it's a perfect comedy. I can't say anything bad. If I said something that's bad, then it's a bad movie. Usually when I fall the movie, I can fall the movie in it, but in this case, I can't fall Problem Child 2. See the sequel. Though, I actually want to talk about the Tantum Pack. This is what I watch. I watch it off the franchise collection, Tantum Pack. Now, Problem Child just recently, the first Problem Child just got a Mill Creek release. Now, both of these have been released on Blu-ray by Universal. So, both Blu-rays have, have it 
is available in widescreen. Obviously, it's Blu-ray. It's going to be widescreen. So, it's a pretty cool disc card. So, what format is the Tantum Pack in? It is only available in full screen. You only get both these movies in full screen. Honestly, I don't mind that, to be honest. I don't mind if a movie, I kind of like full screen. Because it's almost like, it's almost like having, it's almost like going back and watching a movie on local cable or VHS. It's kind of cool to have that, though. Sure, widescreen's going to look better in any movie, but honestly, it's a matter of watching the movie. And for a franchise collection, most franchise collections I own has zero previews. This release is the only one of these franchise collections that actually has previews at it. And there's nothing special on the previews. Although you get the theatrical trailers, something that the Blu-rays do not have. Both Problem Child 1 and 2 have the trailer. But that's all for special features. So you best bet to get the tandem pack. They're, both movies are on one disc, which can be the compression issue. But honestly, with Universal, they did a pretty good job for a release. This set came out in 2004. So it's a pretty old set. I had, at the time, I had a really hard time finding these movies. I wanted a movie, I remember, oh, well, there's a vomit scene in one movie, there's a vomit scene in one movie. I was, like, trying to think what it was, like, oh, yeah, that! Like, I saw this on WB in, like, 96. Then when I bought that set, I was, like, I haven't seen this since 1996. And even for 2022, no, 2023, I keep thinking we're in 2022, but for a movie... For a 90s comedy that I'm watching in 2023, the humor still holds up. So, I'm just rambling. There's nothing bad about the film. Everything is just perfect. This movie is... This movie... If I hadn't seen it... If I seen this for the first time, this would have easily made it number one. The sequel would have made it number one. But I've seen it five or six times. So, unfortunately, this is not going to go on my list of the best movies. Because I've, I've seen this so many times. Me putting on a best of list is kind of cheating. Basically how it is, if I re-review a film, or if I've seen the movie but haven't reviewed it, I'm laying down the rules, will not make it on the list. However, this is going to make on an honorable mentions list. I love this movie. I love to easily put this in like the top three. It's one of my favorite comedies from the 90s. And I've watched a lot of 90s comedies. This right here is probably right there with the first Happy Gilmore in terms of the funniest movies which I do have that movie, and I'm going to get around to reviewing that movie. But for now, Problem Child 2 is a automatic, highly recommended film that you have to see at least once to see it once. If you don't like comedies, if you live under a rock and you haven't watched a good comedy like this, this is the longest I've ever done a review because there's a lot I want to talk about. I can, like, quote all lines. I can go about how... John Ritter is one of the funniest guys in this movie. He is like, he can do, definitely do slapstick. If I can laugh in the movie so hard, well done, sir. I can easily tell you right now, easily tell you, that this is one of the funniest comedies. Michael Oliver is great. I'm surprised he didn't have much of a career. There is a problem, Child 3, I do believe, released in 1995. But I have no clue if I'm going to cover that one or not. I might, I'll try to find it on YouTube or some bootleg DVD or something like that. I am going to cover it. I want to see if this third one is any good. So probably going to have to watch it on YouTube. I don't have it on anything. So I'm going to call it a night. If I take too long, the view will be long. So I try to keep my videos. If they're, if they're short, that means I have not much to say. But if they're more than what the minutes are, then I'll go ahead and talk a lot about it and praise the film. Just like I did with, with a couple films. But that's all I'd say about Problem Child 2. Please see the movie, right? You're watching on DVD, VHS, Blu-ray, whatever. See this movie. And that is it. That's my review of Problem Child 2. Thank you again for watching, guys. It's hard to believe that I'm in the, Mar the month of March and I've covered a good chunk of movies. I have a whole playlist of my reviews. I have a playlist of what I'm doing. I also have playlists for 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s movies. So I'm really enjoying doing these videos. And I'm just going to stop there. If I talk too long, it just would be long. It's probably already long. But that's it. I'm just rambling.
Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Check out all my other previous reviews. You, you might find some good ones out of that. So, I'm Ryan Kinnar. I'm going to sign out, and I'll see you guys next week or next time. Bye.